Hi, I'm Michael Brandon. Someone once said, give us the luxuries of life and we'll dispense with the necessities. In this program, I'm on the trail of the ultimate jet set lifestyle. From boats to luxury apartments, from the world's most expensive mobile phones to that dream car. What are the ultimate luxuries of life? Where do you get the guy who has everything? Well, for me, you can get me another one of these. But I'm on a mission today to find out what are those ultimate luxuries and what are those ultimate boys' toys. First off, one of Britain's most impressive cars, a vehicle every man wants to own, an Aston Martin. This is where they make some of the finest cars in the world, Aston Martin. Not only are they stylish and beautiful, but this is the best of British engineering. Aston Martin started in 1914. That's only 94 years ago. They've made 40,000 cars. This is the latest one, the DBS, the latest Bond car. It's a work of art. It is, of course, the rich, the famous, and the successful who acquire these. But I like the fact that Prince Charles has been a fan and a loyal owner of an Aston Martin for years. If it's good enough for royalty, it's good enough for me. Today, I'm a lucky man. I'm finding out what 123,000 pounds worth of car feels like with this DB9 Volante. When it comes to the ultimate car, there are, of course, other luxury cars you could have chosen, but there's something extra special, something personal about driving a DB9. Maybe because when you get in it, you can't help feeling a little like James Bond. The Volante was originally designed both as a coupe and convertible, which is typical of Aston Martin's uncompromising approach to the whole DB9 philosophy. Oh, by the way, it only takes a mere 17 seconds to get the roof on. This is one of the best structured and rigid convertibles in the world. It's also one of the best handling, and dare I say it, fastest. With a massive six liter V12 engine in front of me, this machine doesn't just go, it flies. Top speed, 185 miles per hour. And if you fancy an adrenaline rush, it touches 60 in under five seconds. But this car is much more than just an expensive toy. It feels like a mark of self-respect. It seems to say, well done. When we looked at all the variants that would make up the ultimate boys toys list, without question, Aston Martin was up there in the top 10. Everyone, it seems, wants to know everything about everyone else. When it comes to the latest gadgets, this is the place to go. Inside this store are gadgets that can put you in a position of power by letting you know exactly what's going on. It's part of a growing industry about personal surveillance and detection. And more and more guys are getting into it. Well, there's a vast range of people. I mean, first of all, we supply a number of governmental departments both in the UK and abroad. And uh, the equipment is used for domestic purposes. Very often, someone will be worried about something that's going on in their life. It may be a woman that's a lady that's worried about her husband. And they want to satisfy themselves one way or another, whether they have a problem. All right, Michael, should we take a look at that pen, maybe? Sure. That is a video and audio transmitting pen. It has a camera here. It has a microphone in the top. That is also the on-off switch. The idea is you wear it in your pocket when you're at a meeting. So that's taking, that's filming me and and, tra it. and transmitting it to, to a receiver where you can record it. Somewhere else. Another room. I could be sitting and watching. You can be in an office, have one of these in your car recording. We put cameras in all sorts of things. That looks like a mobile phone. It that's actually amazing. once again has a camera in it and um, it transmits the picture to a receiver very much similar to the So basically, end. Let's say this is the table, I set my phone on the table, comme ça, yeah. and I aim it at who I want to, right? Yeah. Be, oh. And it's recording as well. Um, electronic recording has become, now, now that we've gone digital, uh, all sorts of capabilities have come to the front. For example, this. Well, that is really a state-of-the-art recorder. It's in the Guinness Book of Records as being the smallest digital recorder in really? the world. Yes, it'll record up to 500 hours, 
It's got fully adjustable mic sensitivity. It's got voice activation. You can schedule the times of the day it comes on and the days of the week it comes on. So it's got a timer as well? It's got a clock inside it, Otherwise yes. Otherwise, you just stick it on there, and if nobody's talking, it's not recording. Absolutely. If it stays charged, it's ready any time it comes into the room. Yeah, it's on standby waiting for, for some sound. I've been given a mission to see if I can set up and operate the latest GSM listening device. Let's go. Inside my case is over a thousand pounds worth of the latest state-of-the-art listening devices. A GSM listening device basically is a module taken from cellular phone technology. So you put this module into any household or office piece of equipment. So we fit it into picture frames, wall clocks, we fit it into 13 amp plug adapters that you can fit into anything. This is a recorder. It's got a built-in digital recorder. That's not the best part. You can then dial into that device from anywhere in the world and hear what's going on in the room. Inside that plug adapter is a SIM card. And with the simple use of my own cell phone, I can activate and listen to that conversation miles away. In fact, I can be on the other side of the world. We supply it with a cellular telephone number that we give to the user. He uses that number to dial into the device. Obviously, the device won't ring, it won't make any sound whatsoever, but it silently opens up a microphone, which will mean you can listen to what's going on in that room. The type of device we're talking to has huge advantages. A, it's very small and it can be hidden in virtually anything. And secondly, it's got unlimited range. So you can be in Paris, you can be in Australia, you can dial into the device which may be positioned in London and you'll be able to hear everything that's going on in that room. If you want to know what's going on in your business boardroom or in your private life, it's a very quick and clever piece of kit. And being a household object, something you see every day, you wouldn't even know it's there. I think we'll leave it there. Get the picture? <laughs> Got yours. Welcome to Switzerland, one of the richest countries in Europe, famous for watches, chocolate, and bank accounts. I didn't fancy getting one of those luxury limos. This is the BMW M6 Coupe. V10, 507 horsepower. Wow, this is a sweet animal. This is a fantastic car. Big engine, like a Formula One, this kind of power. And it all just goes together so nice. You sit in it and it's like, you're ready to go. All right, a few years ago, the company based here in Switzerland started making luxurious cell phones and watches. So luxurious that recently, at a millionaire's fair, one cell phone sold for a million euros. That's 1.2 million bucks. Wow. Goldfish has established itself as a leader in the world of communication with its exclusive luxury cell phones. The company's uniqueness is based on combining three distinctive worlds, precious metals, diamonds, horticulture. And these are amazing. I mean, tell me, what, what's, what's behind this? Well, the idea is that, in fact, everybody is carrying a mobile phone these days. So we thought there need to be a new niche market for mobile phones in solid 18 karat gold and diamonds. What does something like this cost? This version, uh, this one, here, this is one with uh, a lot of diamonds. The uh, precise on this phone are 1639 diamonds and microscopic set of diamonds. So the quality is perfect. Uh, it's 30,000 uh, euros. Wow. Totally custom or is it... Uh... There are uh, different options. Uh, we have a whole collection, in fact, uh, 15 pieces in total. 
five upgrades in the yellow uh, gold, five upgrades in rosé and five upgrades in white gold. That's in fact the standard collection. Besides of that we are making custom made cell phones because there are also a lot of people uh, who like to give it as uh, a present. Uh, in fact it's, it's very simple. Quality will always sell. Uh, goldfish is the only jewelry that communicates. From some of the world's most expensive phones to some of the best luxury watches. And here you see beautiful uh, models, it's a Borgay with the skate watch. You see the movement from both sides. Here you have the Vacheron Constantin and this calls a tourbillon. This gear turns and rotates in one minute once, in one time. Also with a beautiful back in look into the movement. Or this one, for example, that's a sport watch of Audemars Piguet, a chronograph, which is then more for sporty actions. Oh, you know, for example, Vachon has a production of 18,000 pieces a year worldwide. Uh, Audemars Piguet about 24,000, breaking the same size. Oh, it, and it's through the limitation of the production. And due to the high price, it's very limited and only for few people. No, we have, uh, especially for the high-ranking, special, good, beautiful watches, we have a waiting list, which can uh, range between two months and two years or more. Depends a little on the education and special demand for this model. Here we are between uh, 35,000 and 45,000 Swiss francs, let's say around 10,000 pounds to 25,000 pounds. Zurich is one of the richest cities in Europe, and some of the top hotels match that image. It's a beautiful building. Actually, it's two buildings dating back uh, to 1895. They uh, were built as apartment buildings, at the time quite luxurious uh, large-scale apartments. They were then converted into a smaller hotel in the 30s, until four years back when uh, the owners decided to convert the 52-room hotel into a smaller property even, with 22 units only. The Alden is located in the very heart of the city, uh, so you are within walking distance of all major sites. Zurich um, is often referred to as uh, the little big city or downtown Switzerland. You have theatre, you have a world-class opera house in Zurich as well, and everything is within walking distance. But if you're a jet setter spending thousands on a mobile phone or a watch, you don't worry about paying for an exclusive night's sleep. Ah, oh. it's been a long day. But we've discovered a lot of Ultimate Big Boys toys, and now I think I'm gonna soak in that lovely jacuzzi tub. Maybe a massage, a bite to eat, a nightcap, an end of day, because we got a big day tomorrow. I'm still on the trail discovering the ultimate in big boys toys, which has taken me to the home of the famous Aston Martin DB9s and to Zurich to meet a man selling mobile phones that start at 30,000 euros. Not the sort of thing you want to forget on a train. Now I'm ready for my next challenge and my quest for the ultimate big boys toys. Before I go off to visit the ultimate concept car, Let's take a look at this car I'm driving. This BMW M6 Coupe. The prestigious interior design is stunning and really looks the part. The details are remarkable from the door mirrors, central console, armrests, and the instrument panel, finished in the finest merino leather. Because of its lightweight construction and its carbon fiber roof, this piece of German engineering has the ability to unleash the ultimate driving experience, especially when you get from 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. 
All this could be yours for a mere 83,000 pounds. I must admit, I've never put BMW in a category of ultimate big boys toys. But I was wrong. It's an amazing machine that will always attract attention. Now, if I asked you to imagine a concept car, would your image be anything like this? Rinspeed showcased their concept cars every year at the Geneva Motor Show. This year, they've achieved the impossible with the world's first, believe it or not, working underwater motor vehicle. It's pure James Bond. A concept car is a vision of the future. Ryan Speed has been described as the powerhouse of concept and design. This ordinary looking building outside Zurich is in fact an Aladdin's cave full of imaginative motor mechanics. Frank Rinderknecht started his company in 1977 by customizing cars. Then he let his imagination really run wild. But creativity comes at a cost. It's estimated that a concept car can cost up to a million euros to get the imagination onto the road. We've been driving around. This is a fantastic car. This one is called the Zazen, which means... Zazen means in Japanese, meditation while you're sitting. And the story about the Zazen is really the story about true values, the story of Buddhism. That's why we have chosen a orange interior color as the robe. The monk robes. Exactly. The clear glass, glass roof as enlightenment and the white color as pureness. So each car which we build, each concept car, has a story behind it. So it's more than just technology, just more than materials. It's a story by itself. So where does the passion come from to, to, to make these cars, take wonderful cars and improve them? Heck, I wish I would know. I started already when I was 12 or 13 to customize my bicycle, then my motorbike, then my first car. And it just was, you know, an urge to have a different means of mobility than other people. And it became a profession since 31 years. And you come up with a new concept car for every show in Geneva? Well, since 15 years, we, it's like a habit now. We bring out a new concept car. Each one is very different than the other one. Each one is crazy in a way. It's outrageous, it's awesome. It's, you know, going to the edge of technology and materials. What do you got planned this year? Well, for this year, we will unveil the Scuba. As the name says, it's a diving car. It's the first real diving car in the world, actually going to 35 feet and it's inspired uh, by James Bond, the spy who loved me, and at the time it was fiction, and now it's reality. I love your cars. I want to buy one. Will you sell it to me? Well, I have to disappoint you, Michael. We do not sell our concept cars. They stay one-offs, remain one-offs, and we want to reproduce them and don't sell them. So we keep them for ourselves, and the collection is growing and growing and growing. And <laughs> growing. Where do you keep them? Well, we keep them at our place, but uh, we are uh, now storing them outside because we are so packed. So many. Uh, so many, and every spring there's a new one. But it's, it's the company history, and uh, maybe at one day we sell the whole collection, but not an individual piece. So, Frank, why do you do this? Of course, it's a profession, but I think before the professional aspect first, there's a passion, the passion to do something nobody else has done before, to go to the edge, to create, to make new things. It is hard to put a value on the Rinspeed collection of cars. Making these unique vehicles has cost millions. But to Frank, these vehicles are priceless. You have no idea what to expect, you know, you just go along and that was totally, wow. Unusual, exciting, wonderful. Another ultimate boy's toy. In the heart of Mayfair in London, these luxury apartments are a part of a new timeshare business. A two bedroom timeshare is a one off payment of 225,000 pounds that gives you 21 nights a year until 2050. Today, London has become the place for the jet-setting individual to live. It's all about location, location, location. And money, money, money. Location, money, money, location. Thank you. For the world's wheeler dealers, there's only three places to be. Tokyo, New York, 
and London. Paul, what is the difference between this residence and a hotel? Yeah. Uh, 47 Park Street's um, in between a hotel and serviced apartments. Uh, what we offer here is the opportunity of second home ownership, a fraction of the cost. Uh, in Park Street, in Mayfair, where we are, the average one bedroom apartment will come in at just over £2 million. So it allows you to have access to something as grand as this at a fraction of the cost. Right, and most of your clientele would be from where? If I take the profile of our average member, uh, they're generally entrepreneurs who have made their own money and they're very savvy on how they spend their money as well. And what's important to them is that they feel at home uh, and we, we, we create that bespoke environment for our members coming in-house. So we will hold uh, belongings for them, we'll put their pictures up in their residence, we'll have their climate control set to the temperature they want, we'll have their favourite champagne in the fridge, and, and that's how we service on that. And we're classic. You know, we, we, we've got to fit in with a building that's nearly 100 years old and make people enjoy the experience they have when they're here. The concierge team on the front desk will arrange whatever you need prior to arrival. They'll give you a call just to make sure that you've got your, your reservations for the Royal Opera House, you've got your dinner reservations at Scott's, and you've got your car booked to pick you up at the airport. So it makes it absolutely seamless and a great experience. The other great thing about here is we have uh, Le Gavroche, a three Michelin star restaurant, uh, in our building, and they can do room service in your room. So for a lot of people, they may want just a hotel. We're not just a hotel. Uh, we are about providing that, that guest experience which goes above and beyond what a hotel can offer. We're very boutique in what we offer. We're 49 residences. That is it. If you need to be in one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world, then this is it. From one of London's top apartments to one of the world's top boats, it's something every respectable jet setter needs in his ultimate big boys toys portfolio. I visited the London Boat Show to see what was on offer. This is your Blade Runner. This is built for speed. About 600 horsepower, maybe 85 miles an hour on the water. This one costs around 11 million pounds, excluding tax. So welcome on board. Thank you, sir. This is hull number three of the new 37 metre range that Sunseeker are producing. You know, you get that glint in your eyes, you walk in and all of a sudden you get a sparkle. This is going, yes, yes, I could live here. Oh. Now, is each one of these designed independently? Yeah. Each to the person's taste? Correct, yeah. In terms of layout, we really structure this to the owner's desire. So all of the woods, the finishing, the, seat, the sofa areas are all designed around the client. So each boat is individual. Here, Michael, we have our fully commercial galley. The chef here can provide the uh, suitable dining for the 12 guests that are on board. What you can't get is how good this smells. This is unbelievable. This is like a professional restaurant kitchen. And here we are in the owner's cabin. <laughs> the master suite. Of course. Very comfortable. As good as any hotel I've ever been in. Jacuzzi area. Wow. Beautiful. Look at this shower. Look at this. This is amazing. Now, I would have this in my house. The only thing I couldn't get is the view. So this is our fully commercial bridge. Over here on the port side, we have alarm system and monitoring, and navigational equipment here. It's unbelievable. We've got a nice guest area just behind us so they can, when they're on board, feel like they're a part of what's going on as we're underway. Right, and see where you're going. Absolutely. You come hang out inside or if there's weather. Yeah. You know? That's the only thing you don't get on, on the, uh, on the, in the you know, navigation here. You don't feel the weather. No. It's a nice fixed, enclosed area. In bad weather, you can sit in comfort. Or if it's hot, turn the air conditioning up. This is our upper saloon. Another interior seating area with a rise and fall television. The playroom. The playroom. Very nice. And we open straight out onto the dining table, the exterior dining. We also have a nice bar. Nice touches, everything, all the detail in this boat is absolutely stunning. I love the shutters all in wood to match the wood. Well, all this is rather inspiring. How about a glass of champagne?
This is life.